Bonjour mes amis, bienvenue à Parlons Français. Hi friends, welcome back to Let's Speak French. I'm excited that you're with me today. I hope you've been studying, hope you've been reviewing those notes and learning vocabulary. Remember, the easiest thing to do in a language is to learn words and open our mouths and just try to speak. That's the best thing we can do to become fluent. And yeah, it's a little tough at first, people speaking back to us and we're unsure what they're saying, but we'll politely ask them to slow down and process it. And before you know it, you're going to be understanding a lot of what people say. And you're going to be having a conversation in French. I also hope that you have connected on the internet with maybe somebody in another country. All right. Let's begin our time together today with a review of some of the words that we went over last class. And those were places that we can go in a town, uh, places to visit, maybe things we might pass. Um, so let's start out, let's, let's look at these words here. First of all, this was the movie theater, le cinéma. And remember, that's a little different than a, than a theater where we would see a play. That's a movie theater. And then something very popular in France is our castles. And so we learned this word, le château. Le château. Just a quick grammar note. What happens to that word when it becomes plural? You guessed it. E-A-U words become X. All right, we just put an X on there instead of an S to make it plural. And it'd be le château. The L-E becomes L-E-S. All right, the next thing is a port. You may very well pass a port city as you're traveling through France or Canada or wherever you go where French is spoken. And so a port is le port, le port. And then something you must visit in Paris, it's the opera. This one, l'opéra, l'opéra. And just a reminder that opera house is masculine. It's one of those we can't tell because it's an L apostrophe. All right. So just try to remember that's masculine. Okay. Restaurant, le restaurant, le restaurant. That's pretty easy to remember how to spell, isn't it? Because it looks a lot like our English, doesn't it? Stadium. <clears throat> Stadium, very popular if you want to go watch soccer, which is very popular in Europe. And that is le stade, le stade. And now we get to the museum. Le musée, le musée. Very, very popular in France and, and all over Europe. It's such an old continent that you can find great museums like the Louvre and Musée d'Orsay, all those great places to see some great things from history. And we also talked about uh, a sidewalk cafe, le terrasse d'un café. Now just remember, uh, we talked before about one of the things to do in Paris is to just sit, have some coffee, have refreshments, and just watch the people go by. It's just a nice way to relax and see the great city of Paris moving or Nantes or wherever you are. It's a great thing to do to catch up and chat with someone, go to a sidewalk cafe. And then we get to the airport. I'm sure you'll pass through one of those. Remember, we have to kind of sound this out, l'aéroport, l'aéroport, and that is masculine. All right, then we get to the theater where we would go see a play, le théâtre, le théâtre. And an office, we might be in an office visiting someone, is le bureau, le bureau. All right, I want to just look at some of these words in sentences because the more I think we see these in context, the more we start to assimilate knowledge and really start to put it together in our minds. And that'll help you form your own sentences. So I just want you to look at some of these. First of all, this one, est-ce que tu vas à l'aéroport aujourd'hui? Est-ce que tu vas à l'aéroport aujourd'hui? Are you going to the airport today? Now, let's try to answer this in the negative. We talked about how to make negatives using ne and pa before and after the verb, okay? So let's say, no, I'm not going to the airport today. Non, je ne vais pas à l'aéroport. 
And you could even put aujourd'hui on there if you wanted to. But non, je ne vais pas. That means I am not going. But where am I going? Je vais à l'opéra. Je vais à l'opéra. All right, let's look at another question. Allez-vous au stade demain? Allez-vous au stade demain? Demain means tomorrow. We can say, à demain, see you tomorrow. So demain means tomorrow. Now look at O, the A-U in this. Just a reminder, that is the combination of the word à, which means to or at, and it's the combination or that word combined with le, the, the masculine form. When we have the masculine form, le and a, they go together and they become o. And in the plural, we would say o, a-u-x. All right? We'll talk a little bit more about that later. So, allez-vous au stade demain? Let's try to say no. We are not going. Because I said allez-vous, you plural. So, you would answer no, we are not going. So, non, nous n'allons pas au stade. All right? Nous n'allons pas but now, if we were saying this straight, fluidly, we would carry that S over. Non, nous n'allons pas au stade. Because the S, the pa, is followed by a vowel. So, pas au stade. All right. Where are we going tomorrow, though? Demain, nous allons au musée. Now, let's say it fluidly with the carryover. Demain, nous allons au, st- au, nous allons au musée. There we go. Now, look at just a couple more before we move on to new material today. Est-ce qu'ils vont au château? Est-ce qu'ils vont au château? Now, notice that Q U apostrophe I L S because que and est-ce que is followed by il, which starts with that vowel, it combines together. So est-ce que followed by a vowel is going to combine. So est-ce qu'ils vont au château? Carry that T over and we say it fluidly. No, we're not, uh, they're not going to the castle. No, ils ne vont pas au château. Where are they going? Ils vont à la terrasse d'un café. They're going to a sidewalk cafe. All right, friends, use your notes, practice as many sentences as you can and bring in your own statements. I'll try to do them positive and negative. I'm going to do something. I'm not going to do something. You try to bring in places, pronouns, anything else you've learned. Remember, the more you practice, the more we internalize and the easier it is to speak. All right. Today, we're going to talk about something that can be a little challenging for people when they start to learn French because they don't necessarily understand the difference. And sometimes it takes a little thought. But don't worry, you can do it. I know you can. It's not hard. We just have to think through it a little bit and you're going to get this down with no problem. We're going to talk about est-ce que, the question phrase, but with que at the beginning, meaning what. So I want to put this phrase up there. Qu'est-ce que? Qu'est-ce que? We have the word que, but it combines with est-ce que. Therefore, we take off that last E on que. And we bring it into the all is one phrase and it becomes qu'est-ce que? And that means what? As if I'm going to ask what is going on or what is happening or what is something. Okay. And then we have another word, another phrase, qu'est-ce qui? Qu'est-ce qui? Now, this also means what? Qu'est-ce qui means what if you're starting a sentence with what also? So we have qu'est-ce que and qu'est-ce qui. Now, it's sometimes difficult to explain the difference between these two. So, I know you've all heard of the books, Something for Dummies, uh, you know, Mechanics for Dummies, or whatever the topic may be. Well, dummies.com has a great explanation of this. And so I wanted to give you their explanation and, and go check it out on their website because it if you want to read more about this. But uh, here is their Excellent explanation of it. First of all, qu'est-ce que, the first one we put up. Qu'est-ce que, ask what, when what is the object of the verb. The word what is the object of the verb. Now, what that means is when it receives the action. When it receives the action. Okay, so here, let me just give you a few examples. 
Qu'est-ce que tu veux? Qu'est-ce que tu veux? What do you see? What do you see? So what is receiving the action of see? Because we're saying, what is it that you see? Um, so tu is, in this sentence is the subject of the verb. So there can't be another subject. All right. And because of that, the interrogative qu'est-ce que can't be the subject. Okay. Now it must be the object because of that. So here are a couple of other examples. Qu'est-ce que vous voyez là-bas? Qu'est-ce que vous voyez là-bas? What do you, plural, or you respectfully, what do you see over there? Là-bas means over there. Now, là by itself just means there. And là-bas generally indicates over there. It's almost the same kind of concept. So what do you see over there? Um, another example. Qu'est-ce que c'est? Qu'est-ce que c'est? What is it? That's the way we say, what is that? We're asking, what is it? All right. Now let's look at qu'est-ce qui. In this phrase, what is the subject of the verb? So the sentence, qu'est-ce qui est arrivé? What happened? You might say, wait a minute, arrivé looks like arrived. It does. And it means what has arrived or what arrived in the past tense. Um, but it's implying what happened. Okay. It's just a different way of saying that. Um, so, qu'est-ce qui est arrivé has no other subject. So, qu'est-ce qui does not have a short version. So, you follow these steps to choose between qu'est-ce que and qu'est-ce qui. First of all, find the verb of the sentence and look for its subject. Now, the second thing you want to do, if you can't find a noun or a pronoun acting as the subject, the sentence probably doesn't have one. Now, in which case, what is the subject in your question? All right. So in that instance, you would use qu'est-ce qui. So the third thing you want to do, if you do find a subject other than what, then what becomes the object of the verb in your question? Now, in that instance, use qu'est-ce que. So as an example to illustrate the need for the subject what, start from a statement you may hear, like this one. La pluie a cassé la rupture du barrage. The rain caused the break of the dam. Now, then imagine you didn't hear the first words you'd be left with this incomplete sentence. A cassé la rupture du barrage. Caused the break of the dam. That's not a complete sentence. There's really no subject there. But you really want to know what caused the dam to break. So you just ask that using qu'est-ce qui, because the what is the subject of the sentence. Okay, I hope that's making some sense to you. But you may want to take some time to go to dummies.com or even just do a search on the internet for the difference between qu'est-ce que and qu'est-ce qui. A lot of times it takes us sitting down, thinking through it in a way that we best understand, and then looking at examples based on that. So I encourage you to do that. Uh, but most of all, practice, practice, practice. Okay, friends. Earlier, we went over those places that we might visit in town. Today, I want to give you some supplemental words that re could relate to where something is direction-wise and some other words that you can just bring into your conversation. So I want to put these on the screen here on the board. First of all, au coin de. Au coin de means on the corner of or at the corner of. Okay, so you could say something is on the corner of the street and using au coin de. Now, à côté de, à côté de means next to. It means next to. So it's beside. Now, à gauche de, à gauche de means to the left of, to the left of. And this one, à droite de, À droite de, you can guess, means to the right of. To the right of. 
Now this one, loin de, loin de means far from. So something is far from here. All right. So and this one is près de, près de, which means near. And yes, when we say near, we have to say near of. It just makes sense in French, doesn't really in English, but just know it's près de. All right, and now, combien de, combien de, combien implies how many, how many, or how much in certain cases. Um, and this one, ou, this is one of those little filler words, ou, without the accent means or. Remember before when we had it with the accent, it meant where. Um, but now, no accent, it means or. Ooh, or uh, ooh, yes, there we go. The next one, pas du tout. Pas du tout means not at all. Not at all. So if you say, do you like something? Oh, not at all. If you say pas du tout. And this one next is maintenant. Maintenant. Now this word means now. Maintenant means now. So nous allons maintenant. We're going now. Now, we mentioned this one earlier in today's class. This word, la, la, L-A with an accent. That means there. And la-ba, L-A with an accent, dash, B-A-S, implies over there. So I could say, that is my house over there. C'est ma maison là-bas. All right. Next one I'm going to give you is l'autobus. L'autobus, that means bus. And go ahead and get this one down that it is masculine. Okay, it's buses are masculine. And it's something we all drive commonly. La voiture. La voiture. This means car. And yes, voiture is feminine. Cars are feminine. But this one might make sense. Mostly guys like trucks. And trucks in French are masculine. Le camion. Le camion. And another direction word is EC, EC, which means here. Now let's put uh, one more phrase into this group. And this one's going to be very common. And this phrase here is ilia, ilia. It's hard to really translate this, ilia, but it implies there is or there are. So a couple of examples before we move on. Um, there is a bus stop nearby. That would be Ilia. There are some students here already. Ilia. There is, there are. Now you can also make those questions. Is there and are there? Okay. Are there students here already? Esquilia. All right. So you can use Ilia as questions, really four different things. There is, there are, are there, is there. Let's put it all together in some sentences just to see these new words and phrases in context. This one here, qu'est-ce qui est au coin de la rue? Qu'est-ce qui est au coin de la rue? What is on the corner of the street? L'autobus est au coin de la rue. L'autobus est au coin de la rue. The bus is at the corner of the street. All right. Now look at this one. La voiture est à côté de l'opéra. La voiture est à côté de l'opéra. The car is next to the opera. All right, let's use some directional words. And to the left, we use that one. Let's put it in a sentence. Elle est à gauche de l'opéra. Now, I want you to know we're still talking about that car from the last sentence. We said la voiture est à côté de l'opéra. Now, Elle, e implies it in this sentence. So, il and elle, we learned, means he and she. It can also replace nouns and become pronouns it. Okay, so I'm saying, elle est à gauche de l'opéra. It is to the left of the opera house. All right, so the little grammar points that we throw in here and there in context help us form better sentences and understand better. Let's look at another. This is kind of a continuing uh, 
strain of thoughts about the same topic. Qu'est-ce qui est au coin? Qu'est-ce qui est loin de l'aéroport? Let's get that right. Qu'est-ce qui est loin de l'aéroport? What is far from the airport? Le bureau est loin, est loin de l'aéroport. Le bureau est loin de l'aéroport. So the office is far from the airport. Another sentence. Le lycée est près de l'aéroport. The high school. Le lycée is the high school. Le lycée est près de l'aéroport. So the high school is near the airport. And a little bit more information. Il is now going to replace le lycée and become it. Il est à droite de l'aéroport. It is to the right of the airport. Now, I'll ask a question about that. Combien de camions est-ce qu'il y a? Combien de camions est-ce qu'il y a? How many trucks, what does il y a mean, are there, right? Deux ou trois? Deux ou trois? Two or three? Well, let's answer that. Il y a trois camions. Il y a trois camions. Il y a deux fleurs. Il y a deux fleurs. Is a question. Are there two flowers? Pas du tout. Pas du tout. Not at all. Il y a sept fleurs maintenant. Il y a sept fleurs maintenant. There are seven flowers now. Now we're going to ask, who is over there? Qui est là? Qui est là? Who is there? Yvette est là. Yvette est là. Est là. Moi, je suis ici. Moi, je suis ici. Ici means here. Now make up your own phrases using these words. Talk about the town and where people and things are. Practice. Bring these into your conversations as much as possible. Now I want to change things up a little bit and go over some words that talk about what we're wearing. Now this is going to be a great way to bring in some new things to your conversation. Clothes, in general, are les habits. Les habits. Those are clothes. Notice right up front, clothes are masculine. They're masculine, okay? Now let's talk about some specific clothes. And next time we... Together, we can review them in context. So first of all, a hat that you would wear would be le chapeau. Le chapeau. Your shirt is la chemise. La chemise. Your socks are la chaussette. La chaussette. That's one sock. Plural would be les chaussettes. Shoe. La chaussure. La chaussure. And pants, let me clarify something about pants. We think of pants as plural. In French, your pants think more of a pair of pants. It's singular. It's this, le pantalon, le pantalon. So it's just one object, which implies a pair of pants. All right, a dress is la robe, la robe. And... A stocking or some kind of leggings, le bas, le bas, a blouse. Now this looks just like it does in English, but we're not going to say blouse. We're going to say la blouse, la blouse. Now a skirt by itself is la jupe, la jupe. Okay, now a type of pullover sweater we're going to use the word, the English word, pullover. It's this one, le pullover, le pullover. You might say, that's strange. Why do we use an English word for that? Well, it's just the way it happens. English words are used all over the, wor all over the world for various things, and a lot of American terms are brought in. And we even use some in English from French. You ever had déjà vu? Yes, we all have. But it's not déjà vu. In French, it's déjà vu. And it means already seen. So we do that in English as well. 
and a bathing suit in the summertime, you'll definitely need one of these, is Le Maillot. Le Maillot. Now the word for jeans, blue jeans, it's actually going to be the same. We're going to borrow the English word again. And they say, le jean, le jean. All right. And just a couple of supplemental words we want to throw in very quick. Me, me means but the conjunction B-U-T. I'd like to go, but I have to work. So it's, it's a conjunction implying that you want to do something or something is going to happen, but you can't. And then finally, two more words. One is su, which means under, like under a table, sous la table. And on is sur, sur, S-U-R. So sur la table, sous la table, sur la table. All right. Now, friends, it's about time to stop today. Now, I hope that you are going to be studying your clothing words, places to go and practice, practice all the time. Find a friend that you can practice with and speak French as much as possible. I look forward to being back with you again the next time we're together on Parlons Français. A bientôt et au revoir.